Hi folks! Today I'm discussing the nominees for Best Original Screenplay, and I must declare, it is a very good lineup, which nicely represents the type of variety we've seen at the movies this year. The first nominee is Another Year, by the celebrated British filmmaker Mike Lee. This is one of the year's finest films, an insightful and human examination about life as seen through the paradigms of some wonderfully conceived and perfectly written characters. The film amassed huge critical goodwill after it debuted at the Cannes Film Festival last May, so much so, in fact, that it was considered a safe contender for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actress as well. But it sadly never caught much traction on the awards scene, because Sony Picture Classics waited a bit too long before releasing it. Even now, it's still only creeping out in limited release. While the writer's branch can often be counted upon to show Lee the recognition he deserves, I don't think the Academy is going to go for it. It's a bit of a downer, and it's the only non-Best Picture nominee in the field. Second nominee is The Fighter, which was written by, well, a lot of people as it turns out. But credited with the nomination are Eric Johnson, Paul Tomasi, Scott Silver, and Keith Dorrington. The film has actually been in development for a very long time. It's been redrafted and rewritten so many times and by so many people, it's kind of a wonder that the finished product ended up being as unified and cohesive as it is. The characters are all richly developed, though as much credit for that should go to the actors. And the story, as they told it, is indeed quite inspiring. The Academy likes the movie, I'm sure, but I'm not sure it would be their first choice in this category. The third nominee is Inception from Christopher Nolan. You want to talk about original screenplays, it's hard to find ones as original as this. It's a highly imaginative concept that Nolan spent about ten years nurturing, and his devotion to the project paid enormous dividends. One of the more underappreciated aspects of Nolan's script, if you ask me, is that it communicates a very touching and emotional character arc underneath all the sci-fi and heist movie razzle-dazzle. It was great of the writer's branch to stick up for him here, especially in the wake of that unfortunate snub for Best Director, but I can't imagine that he'll win. There's a bit of a bias against genre films, particularly in the major categories, so Nolan will just have to be satisfied with the nomination. If there is a possibility for an upset in this category, it might be The Kids Are Alright by Lisa Sholodenko and Stuart Blumberg. This screenplay is my favorite of the five. The characters are all so authentically written, and the relationships between them are as complex and messy as they would be in real life. I especially appreciate how the story doesn't take any shortcuts or make any unrealistic concessions just for the sake of a quick emotional payoff. It sticks to its guns on believability, and rings true on a number of levels. This is also the kind of small, charming comedy drama with likable, relatable characters that we've seen win this award a number of times in recent years. But ultimately, I think it will fall short to The King's Speech, written by David Seedler. You'd never guess it if you heard him speak today, but Seedler used to be a stutterer himself. Overcoming that impediment is what inspired him to write the story of King George VI. Originally conceived as a play, Seedler did a fine job of retreating the premise into a quaint, witty screenplay with marvelous dialogue and a warm, affecting payoff. By virtue of being a leading contender for Best Picture, and a film that people just seem to love, I think The King's Speech should have little problem winning this category on Oscar night. Stop by tomorrow for my rundown of the nominees for Best Costume Design.